Welcome to Traveling While Black. Hey, what's up? I'm Anthony. This is my wife, Marley, and welcome to another episode of Traveling While Black. Yes, welcome back, everyone. As a brief reminder, our show is based on our experiences traveling, and we base those experiences off of how good of a tribe it was, how much fun we had, and most importantly, how comfortable do we feel as black people visiting for the first time. So for this week's episode, we head to a part of the state that we have not been to yet, again, and it's more in the southeastern part of the state. Yep. We headed to that part of the state to visit the cities that make up the area known as the tri city Cities, those cities being Kennewick, Pasco, Richland, and West Richland. But that's four cities. Hey, 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 look, we're not going to get into all that right now. <laughs> yeah, so we're so excited to show you Tri-Cities and all that it offers because you all have been asking us to check out Tri-Cities. So as always, take a look at this episode and let us know what you think. Located in the southeastern part of the state, the Tri-Cities consists of the cities of Kennewick, Pasco, Richland, and West Richland. But that's four cities! I, 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 I told you that we're not getting into all that right now. Each city has its own distinct personality, but all offer plenty of options for outdoor activities, wineries, and a delicious food scene. The secret to the Tri-Cities' great food and wine is its climate and rich soil. Sound familiar? But more specifically for the Tri-Cities, it's the desert climate combined with its proximity to three major rivers. Yes, we were excited for yet another opportunity to experience great food and wine, along with everything else the Tri-Cities had to offer. Drive grade. It's a little over a three hour drive to get to the Tri-Cities area. And par for the course driving over to the other side of the state, the views were spectacular. Yes, the three hours did seem a little long being that the route we took put us on three different highways. But the beautiful scenery on the way up once again made the drive to the east side worth it. And that's the thing. With there being multiple cities, there are multiple ways to get there. As long as you've got your favorite playlist. And cruise control. The ride is another one at the top of our list, so we give a five out of five for drive grade. Level of fun. The cities of Kennewick, Pasco, Richland, and West Richland. But that's four. Hey, 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 hey. The cities of Kennewick, Pasco, Richland, and West Richland that make up the Tri Cities all offer great options for things to do. But we wanted to make sure that we experienced at least one thing that aligns to what makes the Tri Cities great. We broke those things into five categories the nature, the shopping, the wine, the food, and finally, since it's a bit of a trek, the lodging. First, starting out with the lodging. Obviously, out of the three four. cities, you expect to have many options for places to stay. But we were able to stay at one of the best options in the Tri-Cities, the Lodge at Columbia Point. The Lodge at Columbia Point is just like its name states. It's on point. <laughs> The style of the hotel is how experts would describe as boutique, each room dedicated to a Washington State winery or vineyard. On top of the comfortable rooms that are also filled with local wines, the hotel offers a fitness room, spa, outdoor heated pool and hot tub, and a top restaurant. But one of the coolest things that the hotel offers is free access to bikes. Yep, guests can check out one of the hotel's bicycles free of charge to guests. With it being that the property sits in front of the Columbia Point Marina Park, guests can take its trail that runs through the park, connecting it to other parks throughout the whole Tri-Cities. For the next category, nature, the Tri-Cities has one of the most unique and amazing hiking experiences, Badger Mountain. The trail starts off as a staircase of stairs that turns into a rocky trail that winds up the side of a mountain. This hike offers stunning views. We'd even say this is probably one of our favorite hikes of all time. Plus, this trail is accessible to all ages and skill levels. We've seen hikers ranging from small children all the way up to seniors. We even met and conversed with a senior gentleman that said he hiked the trail at least once a week. And we were going to interview him at the top, but we didn't make it there. <laughs> we'll try to come back and do it again next time. For the next category, shopping, we can go on for days experiencing options. So we thought it would be cool to hit up the public market at Columbia River Warehouse. Why? Because public market offers a variety of businesses. The public market at Columbia River Warehouse is a year-round market that features local businesses ranging from artists to food vendors. The market's building was actually constructed in the 1920s and served as a paper mill and storage facility. And you can still see remnants of the building's history. The next category is definitely a favorite of Marley's the wine. 
The climate and rich soil of the area that we mentioned earlier means that there are tons of wineries throughout the Tri-Cities. We chose to check out Moray Gaston Wine Bar. Moray Gaston was founded by a local married couple whose families trace back to France's wine country, and their wine is amazing. What's really awesome about Moray Gaston is that how they take pride in making wine more inviting for everyone. One way the locally owned winery attempts this is by their mystery wine tasting, which introduces visitors to learning to taste wine as well as experiencing new wines they wouldn't normally drink by having them take part in a blind tasting of some of their wines and then guessing what type of wine each is. This was a lot of fun and we learned a lot about wine tasting even though our guesses were way off. We have to come back and try again for sure. Finally for the last category food we could sum up the food in the Tri-Cities as some of the best we experienced in the state so far. Yeah we couldn't miss on any of the places we ate at but two spots really stood out. One of them was actually located at our hotel drum hellers. The food here was so good we had two breakfasts and a dinner during our short time there. The other food location was Dovetail Joint, a local restaurant who features a made-from-scratch menu that is locally sourced. We chose this place because it really embodies the farm-to-food advantages of living in the area. And also, the food here was unbelievably delicious. All in all, for our first visit to the Tri-Cities, I can say we had a great time. Yes, yeah, another visit where we experienced great food, wine, nature, and overall, a good time. We definitely recommend taking a visit to the Tri-Cities to experience these places or any of the other places that we didn't get to. So for the Tri-Cities, we give a 4 out of 5 for level of fun. Comfortability for black people. So our grade for the Tri-Cities is an interesting one, to say the least. See, our experience within the establishments we visited and the people we interacted with in those locations and around town were very friendly and welcoming. So our experience in that regard was positive. Where it gets interesting is when we consider the fact that we saw but only a few other black people during our visit, which isn't the first Washington City we had this experience. But for the Tri-Cities, it felt different due to the fact that the area has an unfortunate history in its treatment of black residents. From one city being known as a sundown town to another being strategic in where black residents could live. So it kind of felt as if the lack of black people was the ramifications of that past. It does feel like the Tri-Cities is making an effort to continue to improve from the mistakes of its past, and there are still black residents in the Tri-Cities thriving, specifically in the city of Pasco. We will be going back to cover those individuals and tell their stories. Again, we absolutely still recommend experiencing the Tri-Cities. I mean, the lack of black faces and in a place that once attempted to exclude black people is even more of a reason to go. Like we said, we're going back. So for comfortability for black people, even with our great time and welcomed experience, the current condition of an area still healing from the ramifications of its past makes us give the Tri-Cities a 3.5 out of 5. We hope you found this episode to be helpful and entertaining. Be sure to check out our previous episodes. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out on all of our social media platforms. Until next time, beautiful people, stay up, stay true, and do you.